cavalry had traditionally been the shock arm of armies. The most famous actions of the Napoleonic Wars are to a large degree cavalry charges. In the decades that followed, the cavalry arm lost a lot of the shock prowess due to the improvements in firearms, and the branch had to find a new purpose to stay relevant. During the Civil War, raids and reconnaissance became the main purpose for the cavalry of both armies. Raids served the main purpose of removing supplies from the enemy, often with disastrous effects. With the added bonus that some supplies could be captured and salvaged. This latter bonus gradually became more important for the Confederate armies as territory was lost to the advancing Union armies. Most importantly due to the fall of Vicksburg and Port Hudson, which meant that all Confederate territory west of the river was cut off. This hit the Confederate food supply hard, and by the autumn of 1864, Lee had serious problems feeding his Army of Northern Virginia. By late 1864, the army was enduring a slow process of starvation in the siege lines around Richmond and Petersburg. Added to the diminishing food supply in general was the problem of Union forces gradually cutting all the rail lines that supplied Lee's army. There seemed to be only one option available to the hard-pressed Confederate forces. Steal the supplies they could not produce for themselves. For this task, the cavalry was most suitable. After the death of Jeb Stuart, the Confederate cavalry of the Army of Northern Virginia had been handed over to the flamboyant Wade Hampton III. Hampton had received intelligence from the scout George Shaburn of the Jeff Davis Legion that about 3,000 cattle destined for Grant's army were being held at Coggins Point on the James River and were lightly guarded. Hampton thought that the opportunity was too good to pass up. He decided that he would attempt to ride around the flank of the Union Army besieging Petersburg, much in the same way as his predecessor had been fond of doing, and then steal the cattle. Hampton selected a force of about 3,000 Confederate cavalry for the action, most of them belonging to Rooney Lee's division, Robert E. Lee's son, but he also specifically chose to include former professional cattle thieves from Texas. Hampton's force left the Confederate lines on the 14th of September along the Boynton Plank Road, then turned to the east across Wilkinson's Bridge before heading northeast towards Coggins Point. His command reached the final river crossing undetected at Cook's Bridge on the 15th. The bridge over the river had been destroyed by Union soldiers, which was exactly why Hampton had chosen it as his crossing point. He figured that a destroyed bridge would not have any guards. His engineers quickly set up a new bridge for the cavalry, and once finished, they crossed it without incident. Successful execution meant that in the early hours of the 16th of September, Hampton's forces were within striking distance of the Union cattle herd, and he therefore divided his forces. The smallest part under Deering was to protect the eastern flank against any Union forces that might be in the area. Rooney Lee's division would strike west towards Prince George Courthouse, scatter the Union soldiers and guard the western flank, while Russer would strike and capture the cattle herd. At about 5 a.m., with all the units in position, Hampton ordered the attack to begin. Rosser struck first, and after a valiant but short defense by the outnumbered Union forces, the Confederates captured the cattle. Lee and Deering had successfully taken up their respective blocking positions, and after three hours of gathering up the cattle, Hampton ordered his force to head back to their own lines, using the same way they had come.
when his force reached Ebenezer Church. They encountered a brigade of about 2,000 Union cavalry that had been sent to intercept them. Rosser managed to hold the Union force off until nightfall, and the cattle successfully reached Confederate lines on the 17th. The raid had without a doubt been a success. In his after-action report, Hampton stated that the command returned to their old quarters after an absence of three days, during which they had marched upward of a hundred miles, defeating the enemy in two fights and bringing from his lines in safety a large amount of captured property, together with the 304 prisoners. Of the 2,486 cattle captured, 2,468 had been brought in, and 11 wagons brought in safely several others having been destroyed. Three camps of the enemy were burned after securing from them some very valuable stores, including quite a number of blankets. My loss was 10 killed, 47 wounded, and 4 missing. Hampton had secured much needed food and thoroughly embarrassed the Federal High Command. Meade had in fact warned of such an action when most of his cavalry had been sent to the Shenandoah Valley with Sheridan. Once Abraham Lincoln was informed of the raid, he commented that it was the slickest piece of cattle stealing he ever heard of. Strategically, however, the raid changed little. The Confederate forces lacked hay or fodder for the cattle. They therefore had to slaughter most of the herd within a few days. Lee's army also lacked salt, and thus had no way of preserving the meat once the cattle had been slaughtered. The Confederate forces only had one choice, eat as much as possible before the meat spoiled. Some Confederate soldiers would also use beef as trading goods with the Union soldiers in informal truces that were common during the siege. After the meat had been consumed, the Confederate soldiers went back to their previous situation of slow starvation. Thank you for watching this video on interesting events from the Civil War. If you've enjoyed the video, please like and comment. If you don't want to miss any future videos on similar topics, we hope you'll consider subscribing to our channel. See you next time.